This is Jack. He has about 30 pounds to lose, so he dieted really well for a week. He exercised and even cut out his drinks. After a week, he checks the scale, saw that there's absolutely nothing, nothing happened. So he throws in the towel and says, ah, this doesn't work for me. He goes on to jump to another stupid uh, diet fad. And of course, he never loses any weight. As a matter of fact, he, he continues gaining weight and eventually becomes not just overweight, but obese. Unlike him, this is Chad. Chad also has 30 pounds to lose and he also dieted really well, ate well throughout the week, did some exercise and cut out drinks. After a week, he measured something else and looked at the few other parameters different than what Jack did and that actually encouraged him because he saw progress and progress equals motivation. So he continued going and not only lost his 30 pounds, but he as well built lean, sexy muscle and got completely shredded, which of course improved his confidence, libido, sex drive, absolutely every other area of his life from relationship, finances, confidence, personal life, everything improved. Now, let me ask you a question. Which one of these are you? Or which of these behaviors do you think you could find in your past and pretty much everybody else's past? Well, if you wanna be more like Chad, listen up, because I've been a professional fitness coach for, for 16 years and over that time I've helped transform over 1,200 successful businessmen and business women. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the full six step guide on losing anywhere from 20 to 50 or more pounds of body fat, building lean muscle and getting in absolute best shape of your life guaranteed. Step one, make it easy for you to win and really hard for you to lose. The number one driver of human behavior is environment. So if you are following a diet, a system, some kind of regimen or schedule that is supposed to get you in shape, but it requires you to be like a robot, to have absolute robot-like self-discipline and endless amounts of willpower, I have news for you. You're absolutely guaranteed to fail. Because if we look at the last you know, 100 plus years of scientific research in human psychology, it can be summarized as, Willpower fails. Two words, willpower fails. Because any time when biology fights with willpower or self-discipline, biology always wins. That's just how it is for millions of years of human evolution. Biology has always won and what we wanted to do, and just if you don't really agree with this, just ask yourself, are there things that you know you should be doing there ought to be done, they're really good for you, but you're not doing them. Like, you should exercise more, you should eat better, you should do more steps, you should cut out drinking, not smoke, you should you know, uh, be stressed less, et cetera, et cetera, yet are we doing these things? We should make more money, we should you know, read and become better versions of ourselves, but are we doing that Number one, or number two, are we doing that to the extent that we know that we could? Well, the answer is your number one thing that's gonna help you do that, whether it be any behavior, by the way, whether it be losing body fat because you're sticking to a diet really well or you're exercising more, the number one thing is gonna be environment. So what you can do is figure out ways that motivate you and make it extremely easy for you to win. So for example, let's say you wanna go to the gym twice a week, but the gym that you're currently a member of is 25 minute drive away. So when you wanna do that, you're like, ah, 25 minutes away, 25 back, so I'm driving 50 minutes to get to the gym, that's very unlikely to happen. Is there a gym that's closer to your house or to your workplace or to your office? Is there some kind of other way, if not, let's say you li live somewhere really far away, can you invest a couple hundred dollars and build a home gym in your garage that's gonna be more than enough to you know, at least get you going for a few months until you get enough habit that this is now part of your life? You certainly can. When we talk about food, what is the environment uh, or parts of the environment that you can do in order to make it easy for you to win? Cut out all the junk food from your house. Throw it away and don't buy any more. That is the easiest, simplest thing that's simply going to allow you to eat better because if it's not there, you can't eat it. Second thing, when you open your fridge, what are the, let's say one, two, three first things you see in your fridge? If it's healthy, good protein, vegetables or fruit, you're gonna eat more of that and vice versa. If somebody at 9 or 10 p.m. when your willpower is gone and you're tired and exhausted brings a hot fresh pizza and you know a bottle of wine or some beer or cake or ice cream whatever else 
You're going to eat that. Everybody is. Me, you, everybody else. It doesn't matter who it is, who you are, what kind of self-discipline you think you have or you actually have. It doesn't matter. You're always going to fail. So make sure to create an environment that allows you to actually makes it easier for you to win and do the right thing than to do the opposite. Step two, realize the huge difference between weight loss on a scale and fat loss, body fat loss. So remember this, there are five sources that you can lose scale weight from, meaning five things that you can do to hop on a scale and weigh less. Let's go one by one. Number one is water. Up to 60, 65% of your body is water. If you weigh 200 pounds, you know, 120 pounds of you is water. So if you dehydrate yourself by 10 pounds, you can be 10 pounds lighter in three days because you just flush out the water, okay? That's what martial artists have been doing for decades now. You just cut out carbs. Carbs are like a sponge. The more you cut your carbs, the more you flush out water, scale weight goes down. This is why all the keto and carnivore zealots are like, I lost 10 pounds in a week. Yeah, but nine of those is water, you moron. Maybe you lost one or none pounds of actual body fat. Maybe it's all water. The moment you rehydrate, it all comes back. Okay, so number one, water. Number two, muscle mass. Actually, most people on most fat diets lose muscle. This is a horrible idea because now you have fewer calories that you're burning every day with less muscle, your metabolic rate is lower, and it's gonna be so much, uh, actually, not so much easier, but so much faster to, for you to regain the weight the moment you stop the diet simply because you're burning a lot less calories than you would if you didn't lose muscle, okay? So number one, water. Number two, muscle. Number three is intestinal matter. As a byproduct of normal digestion of food, there's five to 15 pounds of different intestinal matter sitting in our intestines. As you flush that out with stupid cleanses, if you've heard about three-day cleanse where you lose 10 pounds, that's basically like a laxative, okay? Which is why I joke very often that the best way, most effective weight loss system is food poisoning. Get food poisoning, 10 to 15 pounds in four days, gone, right? It's all intestinal matter and water. You just gain it back as soon as you start eating normally and rehydrate, okay? So you got water, muscle, intestinal matter. Number four is actual muscle glycogen, meaning when you eat carbs, they convert into something called glycogen. Glycogen is stored in your muscles, in your body. As you exercise, you burn that off. This is not a lot, mind you. It's like, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 calories of actual carbs in your body that you can store. However, that actually holds a lot of water. Goes back to the first step. Water, muscle, intestinal matter, and glycogen. Okay, this is a few pounds. Final thing, the fifth thing, the only thing that you want to measure that you're making sure that you lose on a diet is body fat. Okay, so out of these five, the first four, they don't matter at all, meaning if you dehydrate, you're just gonna rehydrate. If you lose muscle, well, that's bad, that's definitely negative, but it's somewhat easy to get it back later. If you lose intestinal matter or glycogen stores, it all comes back really quickly. So these four are either neutral or negative, meaning they don't matter, or for muscle, it's actually negative. The only thing that matters is losing body fat. That's the fifth thing. So please remember, there's a huge difference between scale weight loss and actual fat loss. The only thing you wanna be measuring is fat loss. If you look at the scale, you know you've been good on a diet, you've done everything well, and you've lost, let's say, a pound or two of body fat per week, but the scale doesn't show it, that's okay, it doesn't matter. Measure body fat or circumference measurement if somebody's at a higher fat percentage. Fat calipers that you use to measure body fat are often very, very either hard to use or impossible to get a good reading out of. So what you do is, you measure circumference. Go around your belly button and see what your circumference is. I currently have three clients that are not using body fat calipers simply because their body fat percentage is a bit higher, but we are measuring circumference. Every single week they're like, hey, coach, I dropped another inch off my waist. It was 46, now it's 45. It was whatever, 38, now it's 37. Excellent, that is progress. That's what motivates you and keeps you going. So that's number two. Please realize there's a huge difference between weight loss, and weight loss really doesn't matter in the short term as a long-term trend of your weight going down, sure, but this is weeks and months into it. Week to week, your weight doesn't even matter, and most of my clients who are really tied to that, I tell them not to weigh themselves at all because we don't really care. What we measure is circumference or body fat percentage. 
Step three, focus on the fundamentals. Guys, for the last 100 plus years, we've known that the calories are absolute king for losing body fat, okay? So the number one thing to take advantage of that never changing fundamental is track your food. It's the number one activity, the greatest ROI that you're gonna get for your in input of time and effort compared to anything else. Literally nothing else on this earth is gonna give you better return on your investment of time and energy than tracking your calories. When you start tracking your calories, whether it be for the first time ever, or maybe you've tried it in the past, it's like, ah, oh, I dabbled with it, but I'm not really sure. Track your, everything you eat for five days. It can be anywhere between three and seven, doesn't matter, but for a few days, you will realize two things. I've had 1,200 clients so far that got transformed. Every single one of them concluded some kind of version of these two things. One, I can't believe how many calories I'm eating. I'm eating way more than I thought I did. Why is everybody overweight, okay? Number two, I can't believe the certain food that I really thought was healthy is actually discaloric and therefore is making me eat more calories and gain weight. So for example, if you go to a really nice salad place and order chicken Caesar salad, you're like, that has next to nothing calories. It's the greatest weight loss food ever. And you look at that calorie you know, readings and it's 800 calories for chicken salad. You're like, what? Chicken has no calories, salad has literally nothing of calories. How can that be? Because they want you to come back to their salad place and therefore chicken on its own and salad have absolutely no taste, neither of them. So what do they do? They add hundreds of calories of sauces, dressings, oil, salt, sugar, all of these combined and your 150, 200 calorie salad now became a very, very, very high calorie meal of 800 calorie salad because they just want you to, you know, come back to their store and spend more money, but you should be aware of that, okay? So please remember, focus on the fundamentals, Calories are always king. Nothing ever changes that. If anybody says calories don't work, you should know that they either are absolutely clueless about how any of this works, or they're simply lying and because they have some kind of pill or supplement to sell you. Step four. So once we have the step three in place, meaning you're tracking calories, within the calories, the only thing that actually matters is protein. Protein stands for the first, the primary one, because it's the most important macronutrient of all three of them, protein, fats, and carbs. Carbs and fats ratio does not matter at all for your weight loss and fat loss. What matters is control total calories. If you're in a deficit, you'll be losing weight. And then if you have enough protein, you'll make sure that you stay satiated, your blood sugar level is controlled, and you save your muscle. There's a lot of other things that protein does, but these three are the main ones. Therefore, when you have controlled calories, you're gonna be losing weight because you're in a deficit, but then you have enough protein that saves your muscle. Guess what happens when you're in a deficit, but you're saving your muscle? Where are you losing the weight from? It's gonna come from body fat, okay? And that's exactly what we want. So remember, step three, track your calories and control them so that you're in a sensible deficit. Step four, eat enough protein. How do you do that simply? or how do you know how many grams of protein you should have? 0.7, 2.8 grams of protein times your weight in pounds is a really good starting point. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 0.7 times that is 140, 0.8 times that 160. If you're a 200 pound man or 200 pound woman, just go from 140 to 160 grams of protein, somewhere there, you're gonna be golden. Later on, as you get leaner, more active and have more muscle, you can maybe up that to 2.9 uh, grams of protein times your weight uh, in pounds. You probably won't need that, but let's say you get really, really lean, now you have abs, you're really ripped and shredded, now you can have one gram of protein per pound of body weight, you will never, ever, ever need more, okay? And step five is, if you can't do it forever, don't do it at all. This basically means, specifically in this area of dieting and getting lean and losing weight, that means abandon the get shredded in 30 days stupidities because I'll tell you this, I've transformed over 1,200 clients as I said. Over the 16 years of doing that, an average client transformation takes somewhere between four to six months and this is losing anywhere from 20 to 35 pounds. Okay, yes, I've had clients who lose 35 pounds in three months, but that's rare, that is not an average, okay? Can it happen? Absolutely. Is it likely? No. So when you abandon the I'm gonna get shredded in 30 days and realize it's gonna take probably three to six months for you to get completely transformed, 
Um, in that case, he will um, automatically abandon all the stupid fads. So Dan Kennedy said it, or somebody else said it probably 50 years ago, if you don't know what, you, what to do, so you have a goal, but you don't know how to get there, just look at what everybody else around you is doing and do the opposite. Whatever they are doing, don't do that. So for example, today, at the time of this recording, in August 2024, the biggest current diet fads are carnivore fasting. Those two. So if you don't know what to do, look at what people are doing, carnivore, and don't do that. Because 99.99999% of people who are doing carnivore are still fat and are going to be fatter once they stop their diet. Because it's so restrictive that it's not sustainable. Of course, of course, there's going to be a bunch of idiots saying, oh, what do you know? I've been on carnivore for three months and I lost 40 pounds and I feel better than ever. Yes. We'll check with that person three or six months after that and you'll see they've gained all the weight and then they're going to have a million excuses why they gained the weight. It's not the stupid diet that they were following. They were so restrictive that they were mentally starved from it. And then the moment they stopped that diet or they went on five day vacation or something happened that broke that, you know, impossible to maintain cycle of I just eat meat and nothing else. What happens? They blow up, gain it all back. So why do that? What's the point of doing that? So remember, if you're doing a diet of any type, it doesn't matter what it is, low carb, low fat, high carb, fasting, a lot of exercise, starving yourself, or some intelligent diet, whatever it is, ask yourself within that diet while you're doing it, can I do this for the next 20 years of my life? If the answer is no, you're like, hell no, then you're absolutely guaranteed to gain the weight back. If you lose any weight, you're going to guarantee to gain it back. So why do that? It's like saying, I'm going to make a lot of money and work 12 hours a day for that. And the moment I make it a month or two later, I'm going to burn all the money and still have nothing right after that. What's the point, right? Why go through the suffering and, and you know, basically going through the horrible restrictive diet and hating your life, being hungry, not having any, you know, foods that you actually like because you have to restrict everything you actually like just to gain it back a few months later. That's what people do with stupid fat diets, okay? So remember, if you can't do it forever, don't do it at all. That's step number five. Step number six, likely the most important of all of these is life is meant to be enjoyed. So learn to incorporate foods that you like and drinks that you like into your allotment of calories so that you can actually enjoy your life. The other day, I made a post on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere because I'm on all the socials and some idiot comes and says, well, you promote people eating sugar. What do you know? I'm like, I don't promote eating sugar. Actually, 100% of my clients eat a lot less sugar and a lot less processed foods than they do before starting to work with me. However, people are going to, we all are going to eat some processed sugary food that are unhealthy for us occasionally, as we should. Why? Because if we say, well, pizza is really bad for me. I'm never going to have pizza again. You know, a, a bottle of or a glass of wine is bad for me. A beer is bad for me. That's sugar and processed stuff. It's like, do you know how many foods that you eat that you think are healthy are actually processed? And by the way, the funny thing is this idiot given this comment is on steroids. So sugar is bad. So let's say once a week you have, you know, a slice or two of pizza. That is bad for you but injecting synthetic hormones into your body is really healthy and good, right? So you can see, obviously, this is the internet and people are absolutely fucking stupid and you can't fix that. Like, you can't fix stupid, right? That idiot, and by the way, he's still fat. So fat on steroids, but if you have a slice of pizza or a little chocolate or, I don't know, a beer once a week or even, God forbid, diet soda that has no calories once or twice a week, that's all bad. But being fat, as he is following the carnivore diet, as most carnivore zealots are, and injecting hormones into your body, synthetic hormones that were made in the lab to change everything in your body, that's all healthy. Once you've controlled it, the calories, eaten enough protein, and did all these other things, learn to incorporate a few of the foods that you really enjoy into your daily allotment of calories so that you can enjoy your life and foods that you want and not be restricted because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be restricted. I want to feel freedom. And to me, if I feel like having a beer, I don't really drink, but if I feel like having a beer, I want to have that. 
If I feel like having a slice of pizza, I want to enjoy that without worrying, am I going to get fat from that? So the way to do that is you incorporate these foods into your calories, the allotment of calories. And if you know you're going to eat a lot of them, yeah, you can have one or two meals earlier in the day, be very, very low calorie meals, or even skip a meal. That's fine too. And then do some exercise, you know, do any kind of cardio lifting, whatever it is, and actually leave a lot of calories for the, for the end of your day when you know you're going to have a party, social occasion, get together, a barbecue, something where you're going to eat 2,000 calories and still be fine. So guys, those were the six steps. It's a full six-step guide to getting in the best shape of your life and staying in that shape forever. If you like this video and you are a successful business owner and you would like the world's top um, weight loss and fitness coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, be coached by me and join our 1200 success stories so far, then click the link below, watch the video there where I explain absolutely A to Z how that process would work and how I get you transformed. And if that makes sense, book a call uh, to speak some, uh, with somebody on my team or directly with me. And a few months from now, you will be in the best shape of your life, guaranteed. Thanks for watching this video. Click the subscribe button if you're not already. See you guys next time.